What is up everybody? It's the Inhuman one here and today I bring to you part one of my gameplay walkthrough. This is going to be slightly different from my 100% walkthrough because this is actually my very first playthrough. But because of the fact that I have extensive experience with not only Metroidvanias but Blasphemous in particular, I figured it'd be great for me to go ahead and document this journey and consider it a semi walkthrough where I can show you everything that I get along the way. My goal is to not only get every single item but also both endings in the game that are possible so I'm going to show you how to do that as well. And along, and along the way of course we'll be developing strategies to not only defeat bosses but things like that that can really help you out in your playthrough. So hopefully if I do have any struggles you can learn from them and uh, be able to avoid them in your playthrough. So without further ado we're going to go ahead and get started. Yesterday I did feature my uh, first impressions on my hands-on experience and it was fantastic so I'm really looking forward to playing through this game with you guys together now and this may be a very lengthy series but one thing I will say is that at the end of each of my streams I'm going to document timestamps in the video so in the description of the video you will see timestamps where you can locate each of the items that I find along the way and I'll be sure to showcase uh, precisely where they're at on the map once I retrieve them or obtain them. So, without further ado, let's get started. We're going to start a brand new file, of course. I didn't want to um, reuse the other file without having covered the intro with you guys. So let's uh, let's listen into the the good old intro. In the heart, everything takes root solitarily. Footprints without companions are left behind, like in water or in the ocean's depths. Miguel Hernandez. Eternal dawn of our penances heralds its imminent end. Each was born to put an end to the other. Now both await, but while yours slumbers, mine. Remains vigilant. May the miracle bear witness to this oath. By which I remain here for our long awaited meeting. Wounded by the silence of this sickness. And then, as the city of the Blessed Name rose up, borne on the shoulders of three mighty statues, the resounding beat of a great heart could be heard emanating from the clouds, thundering like the knell of an unseen church bell, raised higher than any other, enchanting us all to lift our gaze aloft in an ascetic call to prayer. For the miracle was about to give birth to a child. And that is essentially all we get for the introduction. It is still very much convoluted and vague and ambiguous, and we're still uncertain of what precisely occurred. It seems to be that there's some period of time that passed, uh, according to my initial predictions and theories that I had, but... I don't really know. We're going to find out along the story. We know Chrysantha is dead, though. She was defeated by, we'll find the leader of the penitent ones, or the penin penitents. And uh, so let's go ahead and get through this introduction sequence, which I have played through, if you guys saw my first impressions video yesterday. And then we can get started and explore together things that even I haven't seen yet. All right, so let's go ahead and heal. Access to heal, of course. Press X to consume one of your bio flasks and recover vitality. These flasks are refueled by kneeling before a preview. We're going to see lots of previews along the way. And we can say goodbye to Deo Gracias. This is where we can showcase each of the three weapons. Uh, I'll give you guys a little tutorial on each of them. So you have your standard strike. You have a downward strike, but if you tap the attack button repeatedly you can actually attack a lot faster and then of course if you press the um, 
I guess you call it RB button or like the, what is it on? I guess R on switch. You can actually light it on fire, which is really neat. Probably increasing the damage along the way. We have this secondary weapon here. These are very fast. Um, you can attack in every direction and you can also do like a little bit of a guard, which results in a parry. Uh, I couldn't find any, uh, anything really neat with these. They're really neat. And of course you can use this guy to attack and gauge the damage. I preferred this weapon right here, which I thought was well balanced. And it had a nice downward thrust, which just does a ton of damage. So I really love this weapon. This is the one we'll be using. It's called um, Ruego al Alba, which means like, I beg to the sunrise or something like that. So um, I speak Spanish, but this is 100% like, either whether it be Castilian or, you know, it's, so it's, it's a little, eh, it's a different dialect. Thou hast chosen thine companion on this pilgrimage. Only the miracle knows when thou shalt meet again in the presence of her two sisters. So this is the confirmation of the weapon we're choosing. Uh, pretty much, we may or may not find the other two weapons. I think we probably will along the main quest, but those two sashes are going to go away. And now it's our goal to try and uh, at least find them at some point and reunite the three sisters. And maybe that's what it is. Alright, so now we're back here. There was actually nothing. Uh, over here, so if you press uh, ZR, that is a way to uh, dash or kind of like sli you know, I guess, yeah, it's a dash, it's like a nice little evasive maneuver, which we will be using here shortly. So we'll say Bada de Gracias once again, our giant ropey fellow, and we're gonna make our way over here, do some combat. When the repos of the silent one, uh, there's not a lot going on here. That we can actually um, find, or, you know, interact with at any point in time. So we need to wait until we get, of course, uh, way more items like mobility items and all that, so we can find all the secrets. Here it's just showing us, you know, the basics: how to jump down from ledges, how to slide. Here's our first preview, so we can go ahead and replenish our flasks. Resting before a preview will restore your health and flasks. It is the only way to save your progress. Upon dying, you will reappear at the last preview you visited, and all the progress you have made since that point will be lost. Kneel before one whenever you can. I think that's a slight departure from the previous game. I don't think you lost all your progress unless you turn off the game. I thought that it saved even after, but who knows. This is our first kind of like mini boss encounter. It's more of a tutorial on how to slide, if I'm being honest with you guys. So this is the faceless one, Chisel of Oblivion. So all you gotta do is just dash, get in a few strikes, jump over his ability here. If he raises his arm up, he's gonna slide, so you can jump over that as well. We're gonna jump over. We're gonna slide, we're gonna hit him in the air just because we're awesome. We're gonna jump over that, slide over to him. Slide again, hit him in the air. We can keep doing this repeatedly and we will pretty much beat him unscathed if we do it successfully. There you go. Slide. They telegraph their attacks in this game really, really well, so it's as long as you learn their moveset, then you're gonna have a great time not getting hit in the face. There you go. And that's the first boss, no damage. Now this should net us, uh, I think it's called a Seal of Martyrdom. He looks massive. He looks absolutely massive. So we, oh, it's a mark of martyrdom. These are used to upgrade uh, a number of things, actually, in your inventory, and we'll get to that once we meet a certain NPC. So we now have our first mark of martyrdom. We'll break this little gate here so we can gain access, and here we meet Anunciada. For those of you who've seen the trailer, you may recognize her.
penitent one, returned from the tomb, and walking among the mourners, your awakening is now written on the eternal pages. Anunthiada is my name, and I hail from the heavenly mountains on high, the seat and the beginning of all that is holy, so that I may address you. Look upon me thus as a preceptor in this enterprise, hailing from the highest of all seats. Penitent one, the miracle shall give birth to a new child in a great heart descended from the clouds that watches over the ancient city of the blessed name from on high. You must reach it to stop its birth. But on this ascending path of penitence, the Arch Confraternity awaits you. Those penitents that the miracle itself took as its sentinels now await your arrival. Orospina, the Confraternity of Embroiderers. Benedicta of the Confraternity of Endless Orison. Odon of the Confraternity of Salt. Lesmes of the Confraternity of Incorruptible Flesh. All under the dictate of the oldest penitent, the first among them all, who was Eviterno, father of the penitents. Penitent One, the miracle has instilled three regrets in the consciences of three of its guardians. Only by revealing them shall you achieve the humiliation of the sculpted figures that hold up the city, allowing you to ascend to its upper reaches, and finally to the Great Heart. Look for the guardians. And here we get the general idea of where these three guardians are. These three in particular, this is probably not Orospina, but the one uh, Benedicta, I imagine. And then we also have way over here, this is Orospina, the embroidery place, the embroiderer penitent. And then Crown of Towers, it's hard to say if that's Lesmes or maybe, I don't know, is that Odon, the, the bro of salt? I have no clue. We'll find out though. But anyways, this is the map. We're going to be using this quite a bit. Uh, right now we're in the repose of the silent one, which is obviously like our area. Uh, if we speak to her again, we'll see if she just repeats her dialogue. Only by revealing the regrets guarded by the three guardians can you ascend to its upper reaches and at last hasten towards the great heart. So the regrets are essentially uh, similar to the three holy wounds from the last game. Goodbye, Nunciada. So there she goes. And here's our next purview. We're in the ravine of the high stones now. And I'll make sure that when I obtain items, I'll show you guys exactly where I get them. We can parry and all that good stuff, so... Regal Alba is the most balanced weapon in your arsenal. Behind its coarse serrated blades lies a versatile weapon able to combine powerful attacks without giving the enemy a moment's respite. A blood pact will allow the enemy's wounds to heal the wounds of whoever wields it. So uh, there's a lot of actually really cool skill trees for each of the weapons and in this one in particular already has the weight of sin unlocked. There are some other things we can unlock as well once we use marks of martyrdom in the near future. This is the weight of sin. We used that before already. I'm going to parry this just to kind of get an idea. Really? Oh, okay. I'm not going to parry that at all. Oh, okay. Or that. There it is. I don't want to parry that anyways. And then here we can do our little stab attack, which is awesome. It's got some great AoE to it. Very, very good. Probably could have done a nice finisher there. I haven't done a finisher yet. That would be fun. And you do take contact damage. I'm going to show you guys the first secret. One we can't interact with just yet. Uh, so we will return to this in the near future. You can mark things on the map. So there's always a way. But what I like to do is, if you can see here, one of the best things to help keep track 
is that you see the solid white line. Well, if there's not a solid white line around the map, that means there's something that you can move towards. So here, that means we can move upwards. right? So that's not really something that I need to use a marker for. Same goes for here, and of course this area here. So there's obviously an area that we can explore that we just don't have the ability to explore just yet. So to me, that's sufficient to find um, you know, the secret. Here is another secret if we slide. Obviously, this is some sort of locked door that we can't access just yet. So again, it makes it seem as if there is going to be some means to either uh, pass the threshold of this door or unlock it, and then we can follow, probably go up towards this particular boss. But anyways, right now, that's not really sufficient or necessary for us to add any markers. To me, it's pretty evident that that's a secret. Here we have our very first, um, they call it a miracle, or it's a prayer and a fervor. Interesting thing about it in this game is I'll go ahead and read this. Attacking and executing enemies fills your fervor bar, which enables you to perform varied and powerful prayers. You can equip them in your inventory, which we will do. There's two different types. So you have a verse, which is a quick prayer, and you have a chant, which is a more powerful prayer that takes a little bit of time to kind of like, you know, to summon or to, to cast. So uh, really interesting. So depending on the type that you have, you can equip that. So right now this is a chant, which means it's going to be a longer one. So we have to hold down an A. And that's a bit of a difference from what we had experienced previously. Now the lore for this is, Betheneras to the burial of the lights. Chant to the friendly flame that naught could extinguish. Heavy clods of soil covered it, and deprived of shadow, it now sleeps in repose. Very cool. Invokes flames from the very earth itself, which inflict fire damage. This is actually pretty neat. I actually like it quite a bit. I'll show you guys what it does. Ah, contact damage, my favorite. One of the things I hate most about Metroidvania is I love the genre, but I absolutely hate contact damage. Not a fan. This right here is the very first free Tears of Atonement. There's a lot of altars like that we'll find along the way. But anyway, so that you know where the very first you know, chant is. It's right here in this location. So I'm going to leave it here marked on the map so you guys know exactly where it's at. And what I'll do is on the, on the go forward, once I, immediately after I obtain it, I'll show you exactly where it is on the map. Lovely. Alright. Taking a little bit of contact damage. I'm going to have to get used to that, obviously. What? I'm stopping his attack, so he wasn't able to finish his his follow through there. There's a ladder up here that we'll have to somehow reach, and then of course maybe we can reach this part as well. Maybe if we aim, you know, empower or improve our downward slam, because there's certainly a pathway down there. I'll show you guys this cast right now. It's really cool. Does tons of damage. We'll go ahead and heal again. And on this little ledge, we can jump and get our first little bro. It's like the Children of Moonlight all over again. And that's right here in this location, in the Ravine of the High Stones. So all you have to do is just work your way, and it's unavoidable at this point. Absolutely unavoidable. Can't wait till we get an air dash. That's going to be a lot of fun. You know, I keep interrupting his attack, and I'm waiting to parry, so I have to just make a decision, and it will just slash him to death. The parry does tons of damage. Okay, here we go. That enemy's not very bad at all. You just kind of keep, keep him guessing, keep dashing through them, and jump over their roll attacks. Alright, so this is the City of the Blessed Name. Not a lot we can do here just yet, but if we take this ladder, we know that there's going to be a pathway that we can reach at some point in time once we get a new um, ability. Once we probably get an air dash, we can reach that door up top. We can't interact with any of these folks just yet, so let's go ahead and kneel at the pre -dew. That'll allow us to replenish our heals. And we can go inside here and we'll meet an interesting character that allows us to absolve our guilt. Actually, no, I, 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 I misspoke. This is a really interesting character. This is a sculptor, and he's got a lot to say, so let's actually listen to him. And then we'll meet the individual that I was referring to that helps absolve guilt. 
Welcome to my most humble of workshops, which is a flurry of sawdust, glue, and varnish. Montagnes is my name. Master sculptor. One of those who, with steady hand and silver chisel, patiently carve out from the wood the faithful shapes of our true saints, so that they might be contemplated and revered by the devout. No trace of light remains in my glassy eyes, yet still I know what thou seekest and needest. For are we not all penitents on this earth, in some way? The miracle proclaimed that, as my profession was that of a master sculptor, I should carve in wood the figure of the Most Blessed Lady as my last work of art. Penitent one, I beg you help me in this, my final piece of work. Seek out for me the finest chisels and tools, the most wondrous of pigments, and the most delicate of varnishes. And I can sculpt for thee figures that will fit into the altarpiece you carry on your back. Like this very one I offer to thee here. Please accept this as a gesture of my unending gratitude. So here we receive the traitor. It is but the first piece of many more I shall carve for you. Now I shall place it upon the altarpiece upon your back, and you will feel its grace, but also its burden. The hands of the miracle will guide me in the carving in accordance with the memory you bring me. May they guide thee as they guide me, penitent one. All right, so the altarpiece of favors is a newer uh, component or new newly introduced kind of feature. Uh, so we visit the Sculptor's Workshop whenever you want to equip figures in your Altarpiece of Favors. Each figure confers powerful benefits onto the Penitent One and can react in mysterious ways when placed next to others in the Altarpiece. So there's like synergies you can create. You can increase the number of slots in your Altarpiece of Favors in exchange for Marks of Martyrdom. So it's important to save some of your Marks of Martyrdom so that we can use them to imp increase the amount of slots we have in the Altarpiece of Favors. So pretty neat stuff there. We're actually going to go ahead and equip the first one. So here you have a really good menu that just kind of shows you, hey, there's like five different types. So here I'm assuming some of them have to do with maybe casting, attack. I don't know if that's like they hurt you, but they also probably give, provide a very strong boon. And maybe mobility. I don't know. Who, uh, who knows really. But we do know that this one in particular, the traitor, increases physical damage inflicted. So that's, that's really good. Let's also check the lore. I hunch in the dark and my fingers fight to hold the dagger. It rides within my moist palm, like a living being wanting to escape my grasp, as if the weapon wanted no part in such a terrible crime, such an atrocious betrayal. The instructions were clear. It's him or me, so I wait and will do so for as long as it's needed, joined by these regrets and silence as my accomplice, until he crosses, unknowing, the threshold of this door. It's him or me. So pretty much he's going to be hurting somebody because he's trying to save himself. This is the um, how you equip them. And of course, at any point in time, you can also set what they call presets, so you can have different builds. I think that's really neat because I always struggled with the fact that uh, I had an exploration type setout or loadout. I had a loadout for killing bosses and just a loadout and for farming tiers of atonement in general in the previous game. So here's how you increase the altarpiece capacity. All you have to do is spend a mark of martyrdom, and we don't have any tools or mementos just yet. So you know, until then, we have to return. At a later time, but this is. May the hands of the miracle guide thee, penitent one. This is Montañez, the sculptor, and we will return to him many a time. So obviously he's marked here by this little uh, chisel and hammer on the map, so we can always go back to him. He's located in the city of the Blessed Name. We'll be coming back to him quite a bit, I'm sure. All right, so he's going to be pivotal, I imagine, to the true ending of the game, and probably by. As we continue giving him more and more items, we're probably going to see that he makes more progress on his statue, and that will allow us to, of course, uh, see who the, the most blessed lady really is. 
if we go into this door here, this is where the individual is that will absolve us of guilt. He's got quite a lot to say. There remaineth the tears for me, and forgiveness for those of you who seek it. Where are the bereaved now? Where are the repentant? How long since the long agony of this sacrament began? Now that your penance of silence and the pain that plagues your flesh has led you to my dark confession. Let me purge the guilt you bear, and thus alleviate your burden. Penitent one, return when the guilt scorches your brow. I will free you from your burden, for that is my purpose. So right now, I imagine because we haven't died and we haven't failed to retrieve our bloodstain, if you will, uh, our health bar is maxed out. So I think that he's going to be used to help absolve our guilt and gain a, re a bar, a, you know, a health bar uh, maxed out again. You know, a maxed out health bar in the event that it's limited. Now here we get a little uh, hint of what's to come. Lovely. This is the point of no return. We drop down here. Obviously, we are stuck, so that means we're definitely going to get a new ability. It shows us that we can now use a map and place markers. Um, obviously, we've already taken note of all the interesting things so far. We're in the Profundo Lamento, which means profound lament. That one's kind of on the, on the nose, right? Easy peasy. Nothing I can do to get that item just yet but what we're gonna do is here in the little bit we're gonna get the ivy of ascension and that's gonna allow us to reach items that were previously unreachable obviously I could have done like a nice little like damage not a damage boost but like a, a boost that leverages my strike to continue moving I wonder if they have that in this game and before it was very very necessary to solve some of the puzzles especially with the one of the DLCs the crossover event with bloodstained in, in particular you can slide down lovely that was a close one buddy I am gonna go ahead and kill him just because I'm, I'm that kind of guy there you go No, thank you. I refuse your rocks. You know, the weird thing about this game is it automatically parries for you, which I don't know if I, I like that. Before, they would be stunned, and you'd be forced to, you know, strike them at your own leisure. Here, you kind of have to strike them immediately. Before we go down the ladder, we're going to go over here. See what this place has to offer. We can use our ability if we want. Completely take them out. Make quick work of those enemies. Avoid the rock. go we'll move in close take out this rock dude this is like a variant of the those ladies that came out of the the wall in the first game and this is really all we can do here we don't have any mobility yet so we are gonna be stuck here so we're gonna return back to this ladder and we're gonna drop down it Again, if I pick up any items, I'll show you guys precisely where I get those on the map. Let's go ahead and drop down. Ooh, that's not good. Ow. Also not good.
you gotta parry a lot earlier than it than it seems. <laughs> so that's gonna take some getting used to. Lovely. We will cast. And we can get past this guy easily. And we'll go ahead and pop our next bile flask. Alright. I say we drop down here. Show you guys this NPC right here. Sleep, my child. Sleep. And she's very likely a you know side quest giver. Now there isn't a mark for her, so I would like to add a marker. I usually put this little person here so I know, okay. And of course, if you want to locate exactly where she's at on the map, she's in the Profundo Lamento, just uh, just right here on the map. So as soon as you go down to the Profundo Lamento, she's going to be right here. Not much we can do with her right now. Now we're going to go this way, see how far we can get. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of rooms and areas to explore. Um, we have this preview right here, so let's go ahead and save here. We've replenished our stuff. And now we can go back and explore freely without the worry of dying. Now remember, when you do rest at a preview, the enemies respawn. So let's go here and see if there's anything else of note on this side. Okay, well, here we have an enemy. Looks like he's using uh, some mage abilities and his sword. He's a battle mage. We got us a battle mage, kids. Good thing is he telegraphs his every move. And he's dead. So we got a mark of martyrdom. Attacking and executing enemies allows it to earn marks of martyrdom, which can be used to upgrade certain characteristics of the penitent one. You can earn marks of martyrdom by fighting and exploring the map. So there you go. We earned one more mark. So now we have two marks of martyrdom. Who are you? Whose face and name you keep hidden? No. Your name is of no consequence if your footsteps have led you to me. Yerma is mine own. But this is not the right moment, for the steps that my promise inspires are swift, and the will that directs them unshakable. This hatred which blinds my reason with shadows. I must leave at once. So we have acquired the Steely Battle Lance. Weapon Memories. You now have access to the Weapon Memory section in your inventory. Use Marks of Martyrdom to acquire advanced combat techniques. Track down the Bearer Penitents to unlock techniques they are, that are even more powerful. So the Bearers are more, most likely the ones that held the weapon. So if you want to get the, uh, the item we just unlocked, it's going to be right here on this map, the Profundo Lamento. Again, I'll show you what precisely we unlocked. It's a quest item called the Steely Battle Lance. The tip of an object of worship that was turned into a weapon, it delivered a violent end to countless enemies, and the memories of those deaths linger on. Its strength resides in the arsenal of penitence in which it can be awakened. The night was dark and full of mist. Yerma saw her chance to climb in through an open window, breaking into that old church that discreetly oversaw a far corner of the village, a perfect night for her purpose. With cat-like agility, she climbed down a sculpture, a sculpture on the inner facade until reaching the cold marble floor. Nobody saw or heard her. She stepped into the temple's blackness, her eyes piercing every shadow in search of her objective, and there it was, on top of an altar at the end of the nave. A silver rod, an old sacred relic that had remained intact despite the centuries. It shone with a glow of its own, like some kind of living thing. It was said that the rod had been plated with an impossible alloy of oil anointed silver. Yerma didn't hesitate. She slid from the shadows like a snake, took the rod, and felt its cold weight. That argent glow fleetingly reflected in her eyes, revealing them to be full of hate and thirsty for vengeance. Nobody will ever know what happened to that holy artifact. <laughs> except us. So now we have a quest item and also we have the ability to equip, um, I guess, enhance our weapon and have access to the skill tree which is the weapon memory skill. So here we have a bunch of different options we have available to us. Um, this could be a enhanced parry right here and then we have the blood pact which seems to give us the ability to actually uh, gain back some health. That's what it said earlier in the previous description. 
But the way I read the description here makes it seem like it just does more damage. So it says, hold R and Y with the gauge full to activate blood pack. It empowers all hits from Regal Alba with additional hits of mystical damage. Charge the gauge by dealing damage with Regal Alba. Okay, so pretty cool. And then, of course, uh, this is a different weapon. It's like an upward strike. So it's called the Crimson Warmonger. Of the two, I honestly prefer this one right here, the Blood Pact. I think that would be nice to have. And I think we could just use the one and we save the rest. So I say we do go ahead and unlock that. In order to unlock it, we can just say, yep, acquire, and now we're good. Now we have a little bit of a tree here that we can start going with. So pretty cool. And then it looks like, you know, eventually we can unlock even more. I don't want to use both of them, though. I want to save them. So anyways, if you guys want that item, it's right here on the map. All right, so now we can continue onward. This is going to make us fall down, and then now we have... An ability. This right here is our mobility. It's the uh, idea of ascension. It's going to allow us to traverse those special areas on the walls we've seen marked. So the idea of ascension. The idea of ascension. Some surfaces can be. I'm sorry. Some surfaces can be used to climb. Hold down ZR to cling onto these surfaces and not slip. So now we can actually like wall climb and on special surfaces, which, again, just a few steps away from the previous quest item we received. Here in the Profundo Lamento, you can get the IE of Ascension, and that will allow us to kind of roll around a little bit. We can get some mobility now. I don't know precisely where that shows up on our little map here. It's not a quest item. It's not an altar piece. That's interesting. I don't, I don't really see where that would be, but... We have it, nonetheless, and now we'll be able to either slide and jump like that, or you can just actually cling to it and then jump. So now we have the Scratched Lead Sphere. Equip rosary beads in your inventory to upgrade characteristics of the Pansit one. Find additional knots to increase the number of beads you can equip. So again, now we have the rosary beads section unlocked. The Scratched Lead Sphere slightly increases resistance to all physical damage, and it can be found right here on the map. And the Profundo Lamento just paces away from the IVs of Ascension. So let's go back to the item and we can read the lore. Sturdy metal ball embedded in the hollowed out wall of a study. The monk who forged it was beaten to death, and no one remembers its real purpose anymore. Interesting. But it does increase our resistance to all physical damage. So we're going to slide here. Gonna make our way outside of this. There you go, a little wall jump action. And now, uh, I didn't show you guys this, but this was the path down below um, had we just continued down. If you circle through, this is where that guy was. So now you know kind of where we're at. Um, there's a few pathways we can start exploring. Now we can obviously go to the left and hopefully circle back up. And we are going to actually retrace our steps, though, at some point in time. So, bad idea. <laughs> We're going to do this. Wait for this to respawn. There you go. Directly to our left was the giant NPC lady that doesn't want to talk to us. So, let's go back this way. Uh, let me see. Yeah, we're going to go this way here. Got to get better at dodging that. They're, it's very quick. Even though they kind of swing back a bit. They don't give you a lot of time. It's a very quick parry. You parry a lot sooner than you would imagine. All right, there you go. Looking good now. You know what, I'm gonna go up a little bit more. Now we got something. Now we're working with, with something here. Perfect, that's a great uh, prayer, by the way. Okay, so here we can go back over this way, and I think that's precisely what I'll do. I do want to retrace my steps and go back, and the reason for that is because every good Metroidvania has a number of secrets in the very beginning, if you're patient enough to go back. Let's see, how do we activate this again? There you go. That's lovely. I love that. That's good stuff. Increases the uh, amount of damage we deal. That's really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and easy mode this encounter right here, and that way we can go ahead and take this guy out quickly. 
Remember, this path was actually blocked up to us because we didn't have the ability to uh, scale this wall here. Oh, it took a little contact damage there. Or maybe it was that rock that hit me. I couldn't tell. There you go. You can tell there's probably going to be lots of fights like that. <laughs> There you go, easy peasy. Now we can go ahead and explore over here. Lovely, I'm trying to take this guy, there you go. Very powerful, I love that. That's, that's very strong. I think I made a good choice. So here we're gonna go this way, this way, and wall jump a bit if we need to. Get up here. All right. So we can take a look at the map to kind of figure out exactly where we're at. There's a pathway to the left, and of course something up above. I say we go. You know, obviously get the low-hanging fruit. Here we have a an elevator. I don't necessarily want to go down that just yet. It looks like it wants us to go up. Every good Metroidvania has a secret in the elevator as well. So here, looks like we got a brand new item. You've acquired Mirabras of the Return to the Port. And that seems like a, a prayer from the other game actually. And the Wounds of Eventide DLC if I remember correctly. Anyways, if you want that ability it's actually right here located on the map. So once you gain the Ivy of Ascension you work your way back up and you can actually find it right here. Profundo, uh, in the Profundo Lamento. Here we're going to take a look at the item we just obtained. There you go. It's another chant. Takes the penitent one back to the city of the blessed name. So that's not a bad one. If you ever need to go back there quickly, you certainly can. Chant of supplication to the faroleta sung by sailors in need of aid. Yeah, this definitely seems like um, what you know the uh, prayer from the previous game. So I don't want to drop down there yet. We probably need some sort of ability. It's very likely we'll die if we drop down here. So we're not going to do that just yet because I haven't died yet. Once I've died a few times, sure. We'll definitely do it. And of course, here's the elevator that'll take us down to a brand new area. I want to complete the, you know, the circuit though, if you will, and see if we can find a way back up. Here we have another item. This is the Sculptor's Resonant Gavel. So the Sculptor's going to be very happy with us about that. The Sculptor's Resonant Gavel, we located it right here on the map. Not too far from his actual workshop, which is kind of silly if you think about it. If he, only he had walked outside. So this is a quest item. Uh, it's a small square hammer. Skilled sculptors use tools similar to this to work wood in its initial form. However, it is impossible not to conclude that any artist using such small a mallet must have sought to undergo some kind of penance or punishment. <laughs> so apparently it's a tiny little hammer. His last work, part five. It was then that the sculptor, witness of the whole ordeal, was blinded by a radiance that grew from the pious visage of the lady. A flare so grossly incandescent uh, Dark Souls reference, that it condemned him to the most absolute darkness. The old man blinded forever. Yet in the midst of that deep blackness, a vision persisted, engraved with pure light. The most beautiful face he'd ever laid his eyes upon. Now I wonder, is this Anunciada he's discussing or describing? Or could it be even Chrysanta? You know, who knows? But this is our second quest item. Really exciting there. There you go. Now we got a ladder going. Now, now we're talking. You know, now we're talking. So obviously we have a ladder to go up. This is probably going to lead us to uh, the other side of the sculptor's workshop. And then we have this right here, which I have no clue what it is. Let's find out. Not much of a trap, huh? Little gauntlet they've given us here. I'll take it all day. That's what you get. It's like that's what you get for picking up the item. We acquired an empty receptacle. This, I'm assuming, is going to be a bio flask. I'm not entirely sure though. But if you want the empty receptacle, it is right here on the map, just uh, to the right of the ladder that we just let down. Again, it's in the Profundo Lamento. 
It's a glass vessel able to contain the blood flowing from the crimson flesh touched by the miracle, used to increase the number of bile flasks. On hearing the young man question, the elder's gaze filled with melancholy. Yes, this church belongeth to a bygone age, one so ancient, so chaotic, that it's as if it wanted to disappear from memory, an age in which time itself decided to stop in a perpetual sunset, and in which every man yearned only for the designs of the divine. But so it happened that the faith of those people faded, quietly escaping from their hearts year after year. Even so, this abandoned church still stands, its foundations as firm as ever, as if it waited for something, as if it refused to give up the faith that so many had already lost. And the old man stood there, gazing at the sturdy stone, lost in thought. That's really interesting. Is it talking about Custodia? Has so much time passed that Custodia is nothing now but a memory, something of legend? If you look at it, you know, a lot of these things seem dilapidated and dated and definitely worn with time. So that's, it could very well be the case. We're going to come up here. And now we're back at the city of the blessed name. We're going to go ahead and heal because we took a lot of damage. Um, and you know what we can do? We're going to do a few things. We're going to go and visit Montañez, and we're going to give him, uh, hopefully we can give him this hammer. Let's see what he says. Frey, how can I assist thee? You may accept a gift, hand over a tool, and here we even have a marker, which is great. You have given the sculptor's resonant gavel. This mallet is so wonderfully balanced in the hand that it feels quite effortless to move. Know that you have my gratitude, penitent one. Excellent. So, let's see. He didn't give us anything else that I know of. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> May the hands of the miracle guide thee, penitent one. I got you, bro. Okay, so anyways. He hasn't given us anything just yet as a quest reward. But what we're going to do is we're going to go back over here. Because remember, we're going to go back to the beginning. I want to actually be very thorough with this, even though this is my first playthrough. Because I feel like we have some options. Can I reach that? Oh, that would have been so nice to be able to reach. I don't quite have the, uh, the ability to reach that platform just yet. Once we get an aerial dash or something, we'll certainly be able to get it. Now, I don't know what these things do. Obviously, we have seen another... Um, and this would lead us to, I imagine, the sacred entombment. So that's the path there. Okay, good to know. Good to know. So we're going to want to go back then. Instead, we're going to go this way. And we're going to explore everything we can with our new ability. We don't want to go much further than this. Because any further than this is going to take us to the what I imagine would be the first boss. First or second boss, considering who we want to fight first. That may very well be the first boss we need to take on, though. Took out that little buddy right there. And we're going to keep going back. The reason being is because, as I mentioned earlier, Metroidvanias have a great way of hiding goodies in the beginning. So if you are inquisitive enough... Ooh, that's awesome. I love that. You can definitely be rewarded with, you know, your uh, exploratory nature. Execution. Some attacks can leave your enemy stunned. When this happens, press ZL to execute stunned enemies. Defeating an enemy in this way grants you a fervor, tears of atonement, and martyrdom points bonus. I wonder if there's a way to track martyrdom points. Let's see. One of 40. So there's 40 in total, I suppose. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting indeed, but yeah, we're just going back right now. We're gonna slam down, do some AOE damage, dash through, fight this guy. Now remember, there's not a lot we can do here. Um, so we may not be able to actually go back like I thought, but I am gonna try, because I do remember seeing something that was out of reach, and if not, hey, it's fine. Not a big deal. Oh, 
Oh yeah, this here is going to be the Tears of Atonement. To the left, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay, no worries. Now, was there any... I swear there was some sort of platform that I could not... Oh, it's probably that, yeah. That's okay. We'll see if there's anything else. Nice. Very nice. So a lot of the secrets here are going to be much later than accessible at a later time. Ooh, contact damage. Got to get better at that, judging my where my character's at. Get knocked around here. I don't want to pray here. All right, let's see. I don't think we'll be able to find or unlock anything, but it's definitely worth trying to see. Yeah, so nothing's going to be accessible to us just yet. Nope. Everything's just slightly out of reach, and that's fine. Okay. Yeah. I was hoping to see some of these walls that we can now scale over here, but I see no such thing. Okay, well, good to know. Good to know. This is going to require a little bit more mobility. Maybe the aerial dash, I imagine. Uh, that will help us get to areas that we couldn't previously reach. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the area where we found uh, that ladder. And we're going to go ahead and ascend that ladder and go ahead and fight whoever this first boss may be. I want to go that path because guess what? It linked up so perfectly from the you know perspective of the map. It just made a lot of sense for us to actually go there and um, immediately just ascend. Like we went up the ladder and we continued upwards and then now we're in a new area. So then we can continue on to the, uh, I think her name is Orospina at some point and that should be fine. I think that may be the intended path, so why not? And of course, as we know with Metroidvanias, there's always a little bit of flexibility. I don't think we're going to be punished because we didn't, uh, you know, take on the bosses in the quote-unquote correct order. I don't believe there's truly a correct order. It's more of a matter of preference. But yeah, just because of the way that it seemed to really fit the rest of the layout, you know, it circles you right back up. Obviously, we could continue forward on the map, but I don't think that's necessary. I think it makes more sense to go ahead and take on the... I'm assuming her name is... Well, actually, hell, I don't even... Benedicta. So we can go to the aqueduct. Remember, it circled up so nicely. I mean, obviously, we can continue onward. But I say we go this way. So here we go. And we just get to use our brand new ability as well, so. All right, so from here, we haven't actually interacted with any of these bells yet, so what do these do? I'm not sure what they do. Maybe they interact with one of the other weapons we could have chosen. We got a bro over there. Hmm. No, there's no way I can reach him yet. This is gonna be like the blood steps we could use in the other game, so we don't have that ability just yet. It's fine. <laughs> Obviously can't drop down, that would be nice, but we can't do that. Alright, let's see what we got. We got our first preview. And we're going to continue onward. We've seen these enemies before. They have made a return. With a lot of health. They're very heavily armored. Obviously we can slide down there. I say we do that. Let's stay at the low. Oh gosh, here's another one of these. 
maybe the bells open those passageways and maybe we can use that giant you know hammer type weapon to open them I don't know there we go very nice All right. So again, doesn't matter if I hit the bell or not, right? <laughs> it's not gonna do anything, I don't think. I don't think the door opens, let's just double check. I really don't think so. Yeah. So I don't have the ability to maybe interact with those bells appropriately just yet, and that's fine. All right. Oh, nice spike pits, my favorite. Take out these enemies carefully. go. We got another mark of martyrdom. Let's go. And we've got the second Child of Moonlight. He of course is in the Aqueduct of the Costales in this area right here. Remember there's a lot of areas we can't necessarily explore just yet but we do know that we can find a lot of other and um, items that you know are available to us because of our limited mobility. Once we get more skills and other things unlocked we'll be able to come back and of course find everything. So here you go. In the aqueduct of the Costales, it's just right here in this area. Can't miss it. All you need to do is aim upwards and strike. You can strike upwards, of course. Another bro. There you go. Parries are very powerful, as they always have been. I don't have the ability to create a step out of that. I see that there's a lot of like platforms that aren't currently available to us, which is really neat considering we're going to have a lot of other places to explore in the near future, I can only imagine. Okay. Another bro. He was getting a little too close to me. Yeah, too close, man. Too close. Very nice. Let the fires of whatever take care of them. Very nice, very nice. Alright. Let's continue onward. I like to stay on, you know, one level if possible. Okay, so that's blocked off to me. Oh, we have a little, a little friend. I have that too. I have fire too, my friend. Oh, I can't dodge through him. That's not good. Don't want to die to you. Matter of fact, I refuse to die to you. Gosh, that was tough. I did not anticipate not being able to dash through him. That's a new feature. <laughs> Let's see what we unlocked. We acquired the purified one. Let's go ahead and take a look. The purified one can be found here in the aqueduct of the Costales after that little gauntlet with that strong enemy there that was guarding it. What a jerk. Oops.
The purified one increases fire damage. That's interesting. And of course, we can't unlock them here, but we do have the means to unlock them or equip them with uh, Montagnier. So we, uh, we found it, but we can't equip it just yet. The executioners waited until the ravenous flames devoured the condemned before approaching the stake to collect their charred remains. Amidst the cindered wood and ashes, they found the body of a woman untouched by the fire. Her skin, while cold and pale as marble, looked pure, unblemished. Awestruck were the executioners by this finding, and long they wondered who this saint was, as it was clear that the divine will of the miracle had protected her flesh from the pyre. They would never know, but her body, still preserved and immaculate, rests within the most delicate of urns. This beautiful work of glass and silver placed in the bowels of a crypt under a church erected in her honor. Very, very interesting. 15% increased fire damage. And again, it's right here on the map. Can't miss it. Uh, I almost died there. That could have that would have been our first death, and I would have been very sad about that. Alright, so let's just make sure I haven't missed anything here. Okay, good. This is where we defeat that one enemy. Good thing is the enemies do not respawn until, of course, you tag a Purdue. Maybe I misspoke. I say that, and then we got these bros coming back. Why are you guys back here already? What are you doing? And then the funny thing is, it's probably because they just replaced that stronger enemy, because they don't want him to respawn, of course. Because that wouldn't be very nice. Alright, so we have a few pathways to pick. I say we circle back. A little platforming sequence here. Oh, really, bro? You're gonna go through the walls? Yeah, I figured you'd say that. Oh, really? Why is it so hard to not touch this stupid... There we go. There you go. That's what I'm talking That's what I'm talking about. Those guys are incredibly annoying. Too close for comfort. <laughs> That's a little too close for comfort. Let's see what's up here. Obviously, there's something they don't want us to get because these platforms keep falling apart. All right. So there's some tiers down below. Can slide over here, of course. I say we just cross over here. There you go. We got a purview. Good choice. Now we're healed back up. We drop this ladder down, which is wonderful. Now we have something of a shortcut right here. Perfect. Let's see what's over here. Let's see how far it can take us before we circle back and then face off with the boss. This guy again. He's no fun. You are no fun at all, sir. It's not very difficult, but it just more so takes forever. Because he's stubborn, he has tons of health. Time to die. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, let's not do that again. Oh, look at the little baby. Garden of the High Choirs. Penitent one of merciful steps. My golden mask weeps to see you before me. You are in the Garden of High Choirs. I am another of the Holy Brothers of the Golden Visage, born of the miracle. Oh, tireless time that travels without delay and erases a past. Conjuring up uncertain futures. Make us remember when the miracle imposed its dark punishment upon us. That which prevented us from soaring and traveling with the breath of the wind. Penitent one, free my brothers who, by the designs of a miracle that already seems a stranger to us, are imprisoned and scattered throughout these lands 
under the gaze of the great heart that has risen on high. Only they will allow you to climb to the highest point. That to me is incredibly interesting. More brothers, and we shall reveal to you what the tower holds at its highest point. Wow, okay. Help us by freeing more brothers. So essentially, what this means to me is that in order to unlock the true ending, we must find all 33 of the Children of Moonlight, which I don't even believe they're referred to as that anymore. They're now Children of the you know, Golden Visage, which seem to be related still to the Children of Moonlight. And the funny thing about this is that they were key, actually, and instrumental to the very first uh, game as well. Um, and, and so it seems like they, their importance has only been renewed now of course over time we'll be able to reach the top of the tower which will possibly grant us an item that will allow us to uh you know get the true ending of the game but anyways this individual right here is in the garden of the high choirs he is located here on the map just uh near the aqueduct of the costales area so just remember once you are able to circle around go through this pathway and that way you can reach our new friend every time we get a new um I guess child of moonlight for lack of better term that will allow us to get another step and hopefully approach the top so that is so cool really happy about that actually all right so here we go let's go up here we're gonna do some exploring of course before we face off with the boss let's see not a lot we can do here but I am trying to wait for these guys to cycle back around you're just out of reach, you know? Just keep walking this way, geniuses. Okay, good. My plan worked. Oh, really? Oh, gosh. You are gonna die, okay. Why are they so hard to hit? You can't actually uh, strike upward whenever you're in the air, which is kind of weird. All right. That's weird, bubblegum. All right, here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Obviously, I don't have the means to strike that or break that down just yet. So that will be something we approach later on in the game. We can take down that puzzle later. Oh gosh, uh, I don't have an aerial dash, so I can't do that either. So there's another little goodie we can't get just yet. You know what I like to do though in, 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 in scenes like this? So I would actually mark this on my map and I would add a treasure box there and that will mean that I can come back to it. So I encourage you to do the same. For things that aren't off screen, like so if it's something that clearly means I don't have the traversal ability, it's going to not have this white line because we weren't able to reach the area. But if it is something that's in an area that we can certainly traverse, it's just we don't have the means to actually obtain it just yet, well we definitely want to mark it because otherwise we could forget about it. Okay, take care of these little erring dudes and two. See, I don't want. I definitely can't rush across here. Be very careful. So one, two, and then boom. Get some solid ground here. Obviously, that was scripted. I mean, we're gonna fall. It's fine. Uh oh, I remember you. Oh, he remembers me too. I guess. Do you not remember me, sir? We were friends. We were buddies once, you and I. Such a powerful ability, I love it. Oh, whoa, 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 easy there. Actually, you know what we can do? We'll heal. And this time we won't miss our jump, our very easy jump. Camera's going a little wonky on me. Yikes, that's dizzying. 
This is very dizzying, actually. Whew, okay. Nothing I can do here yet that I know of, anyways. And that would then most likely um, either create the path for us if we ring the bell and it, and it creates a path or something. So I believe that that's probably what's going to happen. You have an, uh, some sort of weapon that you can... Gosh, the camera is terrible right there. You hit the bell with that special weapon, and of course it grants you the ability to... Um, oof. To create those platforms. Wow, I am dizzy. I get motion sickness so easy, and that is not the kind of movement I was anticipating. All right, we have 6,600 uh, tears of uh, tears of atonement. I really don't want to lose those. I'm afraid to fall here. Yikes! What is down here? Is that is that floor? I can't even tell. That's the floor. Doesn't seem like it. And I'd hate to die here. Oh, okay, it is the floor. Whoa, okay. Yep. Oh, that's fun. Lovely. Can't traverse these platforms here. Can't open that pathway either. This may be the path that we need to actually go back on then in that case. And there is an item here that we can't reach just yet, so I'm going to actually mark it. I like to mark those with maybe uh, one of these markers here. It's not an actual treasure box, but it is certainly something. I had a really good system in the previous game, but it's been a while. So we're creating a new system. Yep, not a lot we can do here. Guess we're just falling down. Kind of the path of no return here. We got a mark of martyrdom, which is great. I wonder if I can dash through those arms. That'd be nice. As opposed to just taking damage. So here we reached another Purdue. Very cool. We're in the sacred entombments now. I imagine at some point in time that's going to allow us to get to her. Um, so at, you know, if we're able to, we might want to backtrack at some point and complete the rest of the aqueduct of the Costales area. Because this might actually close itself off and then we circle around. Because now it feels like we're approaching the sacred entombments area. So unfortunately I can't actually go back. So I am kind of stuck here. But it happens. That means that we didn't necessarily pick the wrong path, we just didn't finish exploring the other path just yet. It certainly is annoying though to get hit by those hands. There you go. Now we're getting a little bit better at that. I imagined I was going to get hit there. Hmm. Can't reach that yet either. In due time, we'll find you, my little pretty. Right there. Just a quick little reminder. What is this? I'm not sure what this is. Clearly it opens up a secret pathway here. I have no clue what that is. That's kind of neat. Oh, actually, what I should have done. Because I don't know what that is, I'm going to mark that with a question mark because that's, that's odd to me. Like, what is that? It could be a puzzle. I'm not sure what it is yet. Once we figure it out, then it's, like, it becomes a lot less important. Oh, look at that. No way. We get our second weapon already? That's impressive. New weapon gained. You're welcome. Veredicto. Wow. Veredicto is the most powerful weapon in your arsenal. Its long reach, wide arc, and devastating strength increase the chance of stunning your enemies. In addition, its attacks will generate additional fervor with each strike and can be empowered by the flame of the sacred incense. Thunder of Mercy, hold down Y. Embers of Faith, are to activate. Wow. 
Your arsenal has increased. Tap L to change weapon. You can rearrange their order of appearance in the inventory. Wow. That's insane. So if you want the Veredicta weapon, it is in the Sacred Entombments right over here. So again, we didn't make a bad decision. Not at all. We just uh, made it actually a pretty good investment here in time. Because now we found a second weapon. So very likely this is closed off to us. Yeah. Weird that we're kind of obstructed from view there. Now I am very cautious to not die. <laughs> and duh. But I say that because I have a lot of tears of atonement. But I don't know how to use them yet. Oh, there you go. That's the mystery solved already. Now the sand tombs are going to empty. Nice. Hopefully we won't be attacked by those arms anymore, which is great. And now we open up new platforming areas. That is fantastic. Okay, so now what I can do is I can get rid of that. I knew there was going to be a pathway, see? We know our metroidvanias, that's for sure. We're going to remove that. We figured it out. I am so excited about that. Can't reach that yet. Still. Can't reach. Nope. Okay, it's fine. I'll be back for you. Now let's see. What does this do? Wow. So there you go. Does this open up a new set or simply allow us to go back? Okay, it allows us to go back. Well, this is going to be our little puzzle weapon, that's for sure. Got to be careful, there's still sand here. Now, obviously, there's items that we were unable to obtain and retrieve, and that's fine. We will have to come back whenever we have a little bit more uh, traversal abilities, things like that. For now, it's more so like, hey, be happy, you got a weapon. <laughs> and I am happy, trust me. I'm quite pleased with our new weapon. I can only use it on this guy. Oh, that's fun. That is a fun weapon. Take me down, down, down. Okay, boom, boom, boom. What does this do? Does it open that pathway? It does. That's so cool. Okay. Well, now we know. <laughs> this might, yeah. Have enemies. Oh, gosh. that hit, They hit me so hard. Let's get out of here. We need to heal. Wow. That was very powerful. Well, these little hands are back again. Yep. Wow, that was bad. <laughs> you know what? Oh gosh, these guys are jerks. Get away from me. I don't have the means to, okay. Oh no, okay, okay, one hit for those guys. Okay, good to know. Nope, 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 and they give this contact damage. Also fun. Okay, don't die. Thank you. One, two, there. Crush. That's going to hopefully adjust the sand levels again. Wow. This is getting crazy. Now we can dash through there. Man, I'm hurting. Totally hurting right now. I need a pre -deal. Bro, this is probably going to raise the sands. Oh my gosh, okay. Stay away. Oh my gosh, stay away. I'm so scared. So scared. I'll die in one hit to an explosion. Oh, 
Oh, I figured that wouldn't work. Oh! Okay, now we have to make sure we don't die. We're gonna come over here and dash away. I have absolutely no health <laughs> whatsoever. I would be quite happy if I could find a pre-do. I'd hate to lose all my Tears of Atonement. Need some bile. Who wants to give me some bile? Now the Veredicto is an excellent weapon. It's very strong. Very strong. It's got a decent range, too. Not what I was anticipating from a hammer based weapon. Alright, so we have two choices. This could very likely be a way. Ooh. Fast travel point. Maybe. We're back at the City of the Blessed Name. There you go. This will allow us to at least save and be healthy. Maybe. I'm in a very strange part of the city though, let's see. Could go down, but that'd be too easy. Ooh, I, I don't want to talk with her. She looks like an enemy. <laughs> no, she's an NPC, okay. Oh, hey, we've come full circle. Now, I hope I can go back. Let's see. Let me. I need to get a preview. Pre Let's tag a preview real quick. Okay, we're going to go right here. Now we're safe. We no longer have to worry about dying. Now, if you notice, right, this is the beginning area, right? We just kind of circled through this hand here. That's a fast travel area, so it took us from one point to another. Let's go back to the sacred entombments, though. Um, and you know what? We will chat with our little friend. I did not know that she was an NPC until, of course, she was marked in the room. So let's talk with her. Hmm. So she wants us to find sisters. Interesting, it's like this is like the old pre equipment. So she wants us to find sisters, but says nothing more about it. Find sisters. Now this individual is located right here on the map. She looks kind of crazy. Um, she's just above, you know, where the uh, Montañez is and the sculptor in the City of the Blessed Name. So anyways, let's go back. Now we've uh, got a save, a save point, and now we're safe again. We'll go ahead and return back to this area. This takes us to the sacred uh, entombments. So yes, we will teleport there. Actually, I didn't. I pressed the wrong button. I have not been playing a Switch very often, so the placement of the A and B does get me every once in a while. Okay, here we go. Back in the sacred entombments we go. Fully healed up. Now this, of course, is the area we were just at previously. It does want us to circle back. And I certainly will. Let's see what areas we can actually explore now that we have our hammer. So we have a hammer over here. Okay. A bell over here. I wonder if I can reach some of these items now. Okay, well, not really. Nothing I can do there. Drop down, kill this guy. I need to be able to reach the bell on the other side. I think I will be able to. Let's see. But let's continue over here, though. We'll tag this preview, because this is right here. It's in the same area. Let's see if there's a bell over here that I can activate that I missed, because I didn't even have the, the Veredicto weapon just yet. The verdict. Okay, that's where we said, hey, we're stuck, we can't go any further. Okay. Yes. Let me just confirm. Yeah. 
Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back this way. And we're going to go down as far as we can. See where it takes us. You know, what I don't know is... Hmm. That's probably death if I fall down there, isn't it? We're gonna go back this way just a bit, let's see. Of course. Remember, we lowered the sand, so instead of exploring that, we're gonna go back to that area, don't worry. But there's still so much we can explore here. There's the boss going to be around here. Okay, so we've got a lot to explore still. I don't want to go towards the boss just yet. So let's go left. I always go left anyways. Uh, can't go through there, so we're going to see if we can drop down. Huge explosion. Not a big fan of it. They all blow up. Why does everybody blow up? Oh, goodness. We're going to have to change some sand levels around here because I can't actually... Oh, gosh. I can't. But barely. Yeah. That's going to be hard to reach. All I can do is come across straight. Peasy. Now we're on the upper level. What is this? Is that timed, maybe? Looks like it might be. Maybe not. Yeah, it is timed. I thought I heard it. Okay. So we have a timed switch here. Ugh! I'm surprised I didn't get crushed to death there, and I'm glad I didn't. Come on, big guy. It didn't look like you can jump over him, but you certainly can. Okay, he's dead. Oh my goodness, okay. That was close. So we cut that. I'm not sure what that does just yet. We'll find out when we circle back around. Probably just helps us uh, have like a more clear path. Really, bro? Okay, that's fine. Jump! It'll allow us to reach areas probably were previously inaccessible. And we'll do that. We'll check it out. Ah, you genius. Yeah, we gotta be faster about that. Wait, what do I do? I'm dead. I'm dead. First death. Oh no. Was I supposed to go around very quickly? I think so. Darn it. Darn it. Darn it. Well, that's our very first death. I think we did fairly well. Accumulation of guilt. Upon dying, a guilt fragment remains anchored to the world. The level of guilt rises, reducing the gain of fervor and your defense, but increasing tears of atonement and martyrdom points gained. Collect guilt fragments to partially recover or find someone who can ease your burden. So, accumulation of guilt. Okay. Level of guilt rises, so we get less fervor and less defense, but more tears of atonement and martyrdom points. 
Instead of less health, we get less fervor. That's weird. Alright. We're going for it this time. Did we lose any tiers of atonement? I don't believe we did, which is kind of awesome. Come on. Come on. Okay. Come on, baby. Okay. I think we're in the clear now. I'm sure there'll be some explosive dudes that pop up right next to us. I love how the hammer has become like a nice little puzzle weapon. This is gonna be great. I can just feel it already. All oh, right, now we get more sands we do. So I think that's that's key, right? We want to clear up all the areas possible. Now this will also lower. This gate will open up. Easy peasy. All right, so it circles back around, obviously. The same place we keep talking about. Yeah, right here. Oh gosh. Too slow. <laughs> Come on, big guy. Lovely. Get wrecked, okay. <laughs> I like it. Had to kill him viciously, because he hurt me. Uh, let's see, all right, here we go. Very good. Right. Another mark of martyrdom. Nice. There you go. Well, I didn't mean to whiff it, but I certainly did. I was trying to attack the guy on the right. It was the explosive fellow, but... It happens. It happens. So here we got some more Tears of Atonement. I'll show you precisely where I picked those up on the map. Right here. Now of course if we go down over here we're going to be facing off with the boss. So we probably want to circle back to the beginning area and then see what's going on here before we do that. That's will of course take us up but it'll also open the pathway down below. So here we have some choices. We're going to go to the right. We're probably going to end up facing off with the boss, to be honest, and we'll have to circle back around to the other areas. That's okay. There's a pre-do nearby, isn't it? Yeah, up top. So since we're already down here, I say... I say we go ahead and explore the rest of this area. Then we can go back, of course, to the aqueducts area. Explore that too. Need to re up our flasks as it is. So let's take a look at the map again. So we can go down and we can explore these pathways. I'll do this one first, then this one. That would probably take us to the boss. I love how quickly you can change weapons too. That's that feels really good. There you go. This is the first pathway here. This is the one that has that weird little 
platform that I'm not sure I don't know if I trust yet. Gonna dash through. Oh, nice, even better. Very good. Well, I, I see, I don't know what's down there. I don't want to fall and die. Maybe we can circle around safely this way. This is sand. Oh gosh. Sand. And we've already been there. Okay, no. So maybe we just drop down. Here it goes. Yeah, we're fine. Let's go over here. Okay, that's where it's going to be. Okay, I see. And sorry for opening the map so much, but it just gives me a good idea of where I'm at. We'll dodge this fellow right here. Build up some of our our bars so we can deal some crazy damage to them. You don't take contact damage when you're preparing for that, which is great. Alright, so that should open up this pathway. Weren't fast enough, that's okay. We'll do it again. I did have to dodge. Our little explosive fellow. So here we have the broken bell item. The broken bell item can be found right here on the map in the sacred entombments. I'll leave that for you on screen just for a moment. And let's see what the sacred bell does. Oh, the broken bell, I'm sorry. This, the broken bell slightly increases resistance to ma mystical damage. So mystical damage is probably going to be something that a lot of the bosses use. Let's take a look at the lore here. Empty and jingling tin bell. Strangely, it seems to emit a light, tinkling sound in the presence of strange energies and somewhat protects the wearer from attacks of a magical nature. Very interesting. So that's fun. You can definitely equip that. Increase your resistance to magic or what they call mystical damage. We don't have the means to open these passages just yet, but you know, I have an idea. I do have an idea. Ah, I thought by burning it, we'd have a better chance of actually getting through, but I was mistaken. Alright, here we go. Let's take a look at where we're at on the map. So yeah, this is going to cycle down to the actual boss itself. This will just take us up, but it looks like we can possibly go around here too. Hmm, maybe not. These guys don't actually self-destruct. Alright, now we're over here, which should probably be the, the yeah, the lowermost entrance. Yep, okay. See, now we've kind of come full circle. That's neat. Okay. And then if we drop down, it's even lower, right? That'll be the same. We'll be right back out in that hallway. Okay, perfect. Well, at least we know where we're at, huh? Yep, we know precisely where we're at. That's good. Now it's time to go progress back over here to the right and face off with some baddies. Okay, I was hoping I could beat him to the punch, and I did. There's a pre-do there. If we can lower the sand, okay. Oh, guys. You guys are so stubborn. No. Ow. I'm, I'm hurting. Okay. Dash. I can't get over them. They started getting all berserker mode on me. That was no fun. I need to lower this so I can uh, access this preview. Jerks. So we've lowered the levels of sand yet again in the main chamber. Not the chamber outside, but the chamber inside. 
and this is going to help lower the levels and allow us to access the pre dew that I was complaining about. Thank you. See? Alright, now we go back to the main chamber. Uh oh. Hey, Yerma. Here are wills cross once again. Oh, nameless, penitent one. For a long time now, my life has been naught but a constant struggle to fulfill a promise as old as these lands. Is it your wish to meet her? Uh-oh. Oh gosh, I'll say yes, I suppose. When I was but a girl, I was able to escape the horror of the deformity engendered by the miracle. A miracle that chose the clean reflection of the still waters of a lake to reveal the truth it held in store for each of those who gazed within it. The old bell which had fallen to the bottom of the lake many years before, began to ring, making the waters ripple to its eerie chime. Our reflected faces began to distort before our terrified gazes. And the miracle ended up capturing that work, that disfigured horror on the waters, as if it were a fresco. Making everything that had been reflected in them disappear. As I fled, I turned my gaze towards the lake and beheld that ghastly event from afar. Penitent one, can you not hear it? We find ourselves in the confines of one of the ill-fated forms of the miracle that yearns to meet thee. Do you wish me to join you in your next confrontation? What do we say? Is it going to be like the old lady? I'm going to say no. Then I shall continue my search. Until our next meeting, penitent one. Because what if we do have her help us and then she ends up dying, right? Kind of like the old lady. Vidi Diana in the old game. All right, now we can go over here. Ouch. I might not make that jump. Okay, it's fine. So at the very base, we have the ornate chalice. I want to get to a safe spot before we can actually examine it. So the ornate chalice can be found at the very bottom right here. We're going to take a look at what the ornate chalice is. Uh, it's a quest item. It's a cup embellished with small stones used in rituals. At its bottom, dark blood stains can be. Okay, hold on. A cup embellished with small stones used in rituals. At its bottom, dark blood stains can be discerned. Oh, okay, okay. I just the comma threw me off. Okay, ornate chalice. Interesting. So let's see what that does. Go back this way, and then we'll go ahead and circle back around. Now we've cleared out this entire area. Obviously, there's still stuff over here we need to search. Which we can do. Looks like we're really... The boss is right there. Okay, so what we need to do then is prepare a little better. There's still some searching to do, and I'm not sure... There you go. Now we're on the upper ledge here. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Get you out of the way. Yeah, that just not much we can do here. We don't have the means to to break this stuff down. So what I am going to do, though, is at least leave a marker. That way I know there's some things here that we just cannot obtain just yet. And that way I know that it's not simply because I missed it or I was moving too fast. It's just not accessible to us just yet. Now, there's this area here, which I actually am interested to explore. Let's go check that out really quickly before we fight the boss. This area is pretty easy to get to anyways, so we should be fine. We'll drop down here. Make our way back up. And we need to go left. It's all just a series of lefts, pretty much. Drop down.
Love when you're able to proc, you know, like more than one hit. That's so nice. These dudes. Here's those cages that helped us. Now we have the means to access more things. So we got the another mark of martyrdom. That's excellent. So you can get that if you do return. Uh, back after you drop some of the cages down in the sacred entombment. So right here we can get another mark of martyrdom, which gives us quite a few. We now have quite a few in our arsenal. Let's see if there's any more cages we can knock down. Remember, this area was kind of weird. There you go. And I'm glad we explored this. So obviously there's going to be another cage we can drop down. Just need to find it. Let's continue this way first and we'll circle back around. So not a lot we can do here. Not a lot we can do here. Okay. If you look on the map, it'll show obviously, hey, we're, you know, nowhere to go. So <laughs> we know to revisit that. And now also I'll commit it to memory that, hey, it's not something I missed. It's just inaccessible at this point. What I want to find is another area. See, there's a cage right there. Okay, perfect. So... We need to find these cages and knock them down. Go here, ledge grab, boom. We already knocked that one down, very good. Jump over this guy. Jump over this guy. We've stunned him pretty hard, so we can go ahead and kill him quickly. We gotta circle back around somehow. But it's intriguing because I'm not sure how to get there yet. Can I push this? Can I, I wish I could push this. Nope. And there's no double jump or anything, so let's try something else. My next theory. And if not, then that just means we can't get it yet. There's nothing out of reach. Let's see. Yeah, this will take me out. Okay, well, yeah, it's just out of reach then for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, oh, gosh, maybe one of these. Oops. That's because we know there's something up there. All right, well, good. I feel happy with the exploration. We did pick up a uh, mark of martyrdom, which to me is excellent. We can use that to upgrade our skill tree. We can use that to upgrade our... Um, you know, the amount of items we can equip. Oh, we don't want to go down there. There you go. Now we can go back towards the boss. We're going to go right here. We've already saved, so we should be okay. So now we approach the first boss. Maybe. Billowing clouds of dust. Herald your arrival. Dust in the air that is born from the erosion of the walls, the statues, and our own bones. These stones heard so many sins that they could do no more than succumb, shuddering before their guilty echoes. Echoes that could not bear the seclusion that I imposed upon them and that escaped from me. Crawling along these walls, eroding them until their immaculate ashes buried us all. Penitent one, you will now reveal your sins, those that your tears can never atone for. Hmm. Okay. We know this guy is just on his back. Yeah, big boy. I've seen the trailer, bro. The Great Preceptor. I don't know what's happening. Wrong way, buddy. That's my fault. Wowzers. Oh, 
Oh gosh, lazy. Okay, that was a really bad timing on my part. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, no, I'm not. That's what I've been trying to do this whole time. Alright, Brosif. Okay. Okay. Not so bad. He's got tons of health, though. That's the problem. There we go. We're going to tag him here. Get a little bit of this. We'll heal up. Okay. Get on the wall, and then we can avoid these projectiles. Now he's doing three. I guess now because he's uh, approaching half health, I guess, or a little bit less. So his attack pattern is probably going to change up just a bit. I always feel like he's going to do more than one star. Oh gosh. Now he's pissed. He's so mad right now. I whiffed it. Okay, are we gonna do that the whole time? Wait. How'd he get more health? Oh, my face. Okay. Oh my goodness, okay. Oh, I had I almost had him first try. I got greedy. I was gonna proc my fire and then go away and tag him one more time, but that was good. That was fun. Alright. How do we get back to him? Down and to the left it seems. We got it this time for sure. And here I thought we were going to be facing up with a her. Alright, very good. Much more damage. Let's go around. That's a strange follow-up, uh, like the follow-through. It makes me think he's gonna attack. It's so weird. He just ate bro bro. Not cool. I'm gonna jump over this here. Light a fire. Get hit by some rocks. Heal up. Uh-oh. That one blows up. Okay, I don't like that one. Huh. Oh, lovely. Okay. Yep, I got... I panicked there. The thing is, all of those attacks, the cadence was just so good. It just set off my entire rhythm, so...
He did good there. All right, here we go. This, for this boss, the key is really just utilizing that little ledge as much as possible, that's for sure. Here we go, we're gonna jump over, start a fire, do some damage here, avoid that strike. Pick this up, go back in, be aggressive. Jump over, do some damage, start a fire. Avoid his backslash here. We're gonna heal up because we took some huge damage there. We get knocked around here, that's not good. We'll burn them if we can. Uh oh, not a good idea. Gonna jump over this. It's hard to cast right after that, so you don't really want to force it. use this opportunity to strike him a few times. And then jump over this little lunge attack here he's gonna throw at us. We'll just stay away for now. Avoid this lunge here. Watch for the rocks. Waiting for his lunge, there you go, patiently. Go. That's the matter of patience. Let me just wait on the other side. Start a fire. Why not? Oh, he's gonna stay right out of the range, of course. Here we can actually be aggressive and finish him off. And there you go. Goodbye. We got a mark of martyrdom for that. Very nice. We're in the dreams of incense. Be witness to this vigil before my final journey. I, Radames, spent my long life listening to the confessions of so many burdened hearts. Even after death, I could still hear the echo of their mournful voices, begging to be heard again, pleading for confession. But their pain 
never managed to bring tears to my eyes. One of those echoes, those incessant voices, was the very voice of the miracle who commanded me to guard its sacred regret. I obeyed, and it was then that my tears did flow. Penitent one, you who come to witness the miracle, behold. The memory of him still hurts. So it was that a humble married couple, torn apart by their inability to conceive a child, entrusted themselves in their utter desperation to the miracle. A miracle whose light seemed to have gone out in all our hearts. For having long ceased to bathe us in its benevolent radiance, we believed it extinct. The dying day already puts out its celestial light, causing my eyelids to droop. Let the miracle cast open its black gates so I might venture to where that terrible dream from which one never wakes, awaits. Penitent one, you have encountered one of the three regrets. The first part of the testimony of the birth has been revealed to you, and the eminent sculptor figure of the father has descended. Find the other two guardians. Penitent one, the first part of the find the. All right, that's that's awesome. Uh, so far, it looks like we've done a really good job to explore and see what all was available to us let's go ahead and uh, cycle back around i don't think there was anything really uh oh i hear creepy voices there you go hey there's one of the sisters well there you go so now maybe at some point we can go revisit the sister. If you want to find one of the sisters after defeating Radames, you just go down here. You're going to hear whispering. Uh, there's going to be an illusory wall right here. So all you want to do is go ahead and uh, knock it down and rescue the sister. Good thing is they have really good audio cues. Hard to miss. We are now at the lower part of the aqueduct of the Costales. Maybe this will allow us to circle back around right here and then be able to explore the rest of this area. Obviously, much of this was just inaccessible at this time, and that's perfectly fine. We will find a way to explore the rest. Obviously, this is going to be huge once we figure out how to get through that. Oops. Need you to go away, sir. Here it goes. Ow. Okay. Maybe not. You die. You... Come back here. What is wrong with my timing? There you go. Better. Let's go ahead and heal. I need a bell, so there's going to be one around here somewhere I can only imagine. There it is. So we could obviously go back this way, or we can search for some treasure over here. Through the 
this door. One, two. Kind of just takes us back to where we're at, right? Unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, we've explored this this particular area already. Prayers are so powerful. Very, very powerful indeed. Yikes, okay. Can we make it? So it doesn't seem like there's much else we can explore other than that. That kind of circled back to the area we had already been at. So it's just kind of opening up the areas that were once blocked off to us. Let's see, is there anything over here? Just to double check, make sure we're not missing anything. Two hits for those big guys. I can't believe the amount of damage that the hammer does. It's incredible. Let's see, is there anything there? Nope, we got that. I do see a treasure over there, or some sort of Tears of Atonement, possibly even a Mark of Martyrdom. Let's see. Maybe we go up. Nothing we can reach just yet. Oh, he can reach me too, okay. That's fair, I, I, I get that. <laughs> He's like, if you can reach me, I can reach you too. Very nice. Now to the right hasn't necessarily been explored. That's the pathway we can't open up just yet. And this is the air dash. Okay, so we can't reach any of those just yet. So the good thing is we have explored this area, I would say, to the fullest. Um, right now we're limited, right, in what we can and can't do, so. We're gonna get back to the save point that we were at just a few moments ago. Uh-oh. Huh. Can you imagine the just the crazy amounts of damage we're dealing? It's just that's incredible. And the range is really good too. Now here goes this dizzying <laughs> little section here with the, the faulty camera work. Oh, that makes me sick to my stomach. Okay, so nothing here, that's fine. <gasps> no, okay, I was hoping I didn't fall on a pit of spikes. Instead, we're gonna go back around, that's fine. Interesting though, that's just a way back, quick way back. Wow, that is yucky. Okay, there shouldn't be anything here, but let's just double check and then we're gonna go back to where we came from. That's all I'm trying to do. Sacred entombments. Is there a bell over here? On the other side. This is the one we can't reach yet, so. We might need to circle back to the main chamber though, so that we can drop all the way down. Is this the main chamber? Just trying to confirm here. There you go, yeah. Those guys, they really, really try to do that whole self-destruction thing, and it's, guys, it's not gonna work. All right, so now we've circled back. 
that was just a means to at least close off any other areas, uh, open up areas that were once blocked off from us. This is again the location where we located the sister. So we'll go back and visit her in a moment. But from here, I suppose all we need to do is uh, go ahead and rest at the meal at the Purdue, return to the city of the blessed name, and then move on. Where's the bell over here? There's definitely a bell. Oh, I wonder if it reaches even those. Okay, let's see how far the sound waves travel. Wow, that's that's neat. Okay, they go really far. That's interesting. Okay. Two hits for those guys. That's incredible. Now let's go ahead and break through here. I was gonna say, I can't imagine what a parry would look like. Well, we can't parry, so that that's what that looks like. Can I not turn it off? I didn't actually mean to activate that, but that's fine. Burnt through all of our fervor. That's okay. Can't go through there just yet. That's okay. way up there that opens up for us. That's timed, of course, so we'll come back to that in a minute. They're rushing us. Let's clear out those pathways and stuff first. Grab these tiers. 2,000 tiers of atonement. That's not bad. Again, quite a few tiers of atonement right here. We're gonna go all the way to close this pathway out and then we're gonna go back, okay. Now this probably requires a third weapon that we don't have yet. So a combination of all our weapons. So we won't be able to do anything there. Okay, it just opens up this pathway. I want to say we've already been here. But I could be mistaken. Maybe we haven't. Yeah, we have been here. Let's just confirm that there weren't any bells up top. This is the beginning. I just don't recall. There you go. Bell. Uh-oh. Here. You need to... Oh, I can't. That's right, I can't parry. I tried to guard. <laughs> That's my fault. Hmm. Where are the steps there? I didn't see any. So there's a treasure up there. It's a small one. My thing is... That's a real tease. If it's right up here, there might actually be a way to reach it. And if not, we just continue onward. Yeah, not that I know of. Okay. Interesting. This is going to close the path here. Now we're back this way. Now, obviously, we saw that there were some secrets back the other way. So we can check those out really quickly. And then this is going to be in this area. My thought is that we can actually return back there. So let's try to do so. I don't think any of the doorways like just completely barred us from entry. Okay, now we go back here. There's one more little section. We should be back in that area. We'll take care of this guy. I love this prayer. It's a really good prayer. It's a good one. Okay, here goes. So now we're going to do this. As soon as that triggers. That was a little premature. That was really scary. 
<laughs> okay. Come on, come on. Oh no, I missed it just barely. Okay. Oh, I see. It does want you to slide. So I wasn't like safe. Okay. <laughs> I thought I glitched it last time. Okay. Well, you know what? These guys didn't help any, that's for sure. Let's try that again, shall we? Five, four, three, two, one. Let's try that. Does that do anything? <laughs> Does that keep them going? No. Oh my gosh, okay. Come on, baby. Okay, there you go. That lowers the ladder. This is probably some sort of lift. I don't know how to use that just yet. That's interesting. That lowers the ladder here, so now we never have to deal that puzzle again. Hmm. I guess the big question is, what the heck? Okay, hold on there. Barely reached that. Oh, I see. It probably, yep, it's gonna raise that a bit. Up. Oh. That's neat. Okay, that's new. Now I have another bell to worry about, huh? Here we go. Big jump. Dash. Crunch. Okay. And there is our third Child of Moonlight. Can be located in this section of the Aqueduct of the Crystallis. It does require you to do some puzzles and platforming to get to it. So not the easiest, but definitely possible. Well, that was fun. That was awesome. Really cool new feature that they added where you can control those platforms as long as you have a nearby, you know, um, I guess control. <laughs> A nearby panel. <laughs> it's really just a statue, but it's pretty much a control panel. Alright, so now we've circled back here. Oops, I just burned through a bile flask for no reason at all. Um, obviously, we couldn't do much over here, so now it's time to return back. Maybe even talk to the sister, and then we can conclude the first part of our video. Obviously, we can't do anything just yet with our little friends. I think that maybe, ooh, we have a bell though. So now we're that much cooler. Hold on, tick. One, two, three, four, seven. There you go. So we got our fourth Child of Moonlight just right here in this area. As we returned back from the Aqueduct of the Costales to the City of the Blessed Name, there is a uh, bell that you can just easily activate and then you just trigger the platforming sequence climb up top and attack easy peasy we keep it real simple here guys can I reach it <laughs> I cannot all right so now we're back in the city of the blessed name you know I don't think we picked up any additional parts for our friend here but we can equip our second um, little statue. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but let's go ahead and equip it. The wood is taking shape. I sense how its veins nourish a body that seeks to be wounded with my chisels and hammers, that yearns for the cuts and indentations that will free it from its coarse origins. We can equip our altar piece here let's see if there's any that we can use uh, hopefully they synergize i don't know if they will no because they're supposed to have some sort of effect if they synergize but that's fine i don't have any tools or mementos to hand over the hands of the medical guide be penitent one got you bro i got your back man we're gonna do things we're gonna do big things you and i all right so now we're back here. Now from here, we do want to chat with our little friend, <laughs> if we can call her that. And then we have two choices to make. We have the elevator shaft, which we can explore, or we can go further to the right of the area where we found the Ivy of Ascension. Find 
Okay. All right. That's all she's going to say. She's a strange one. So here we have the ability to move on to the right, or we can go back from whence we came. I say we go to the right, circle back around, find a good purview, and then we end our session there. Let's see what this button does. Hold on. Secret. That, of course, is the fifth child of moonlight just below the sister lady all we do is we go down the ladder and then you want to grab onto the ledge and dash and you will be able to find that child of moonlight let's go inside here and see if there's maybe another npc or maybe a upgrade or something definitely an npc oh wow open up the skin and red flesh. Uncover the lie that my shell conceals, for I am only blood and bones. So allow the chalices to be filled with those who toast kings and priests. You want to give the ornate chalice? Agree. Now I shall enhance the vital light within me. So our maximum health was increased because we gave her the chalice that we obtained earlier on. I shall wait for thee to bring me more chalices. Excellent. If we give her the empty receptacle, we'll get another bioflask, so that's fantastic. Now I shall grant thee a new flask. Look at that. So not only do we have our bioflasks increased, but we also have the means to have uh, our max HP increased as well. Bring me more vials. So I don't really have anything over to. I can't handle any chalices or receptacles at this point. Bring me chalices and vials, and I shall fill them with my own blood. Why, oh, thank you. Now this is probably how you refill your vials. What does that mean? Doth thee wish to make the sacrifice? Uh, I don't know what that means. I don't want to commit to that just yet. Bring me Let's try it. Ow. Now what? So I made the sacrifice. I'm not sure what that does. It just gave me a big ouchie. Good thing is the City of the Blessed Name is going to be at the hub center and you're going to see a number of, of different types of NPCs here just all around. It's just lovely. Like you have your NPC, just like in the other game, you had so many NPCs just kind of circulated around here, centrally located, and it just makes for excellent, excellent Metroidvania-ness. Okay, that would allow us to reach another area. Okay, good. So I think that is going to be... Well, actually, no. I, I, I lie. I lied again. we got to find a good stopping point. Still have more NPCs, it looks like. Oh, wow. Probably a merchant. Come closer and contemplate this delicate tumbaga. The embroidered shawls, the silk dresses. You are in Rahima's shop. My goods are my home, my bed. They are as much a part of me as I am of them. You point, and this diligent arm will surely grant your request. Hmm. Okay, yeah, so... Oh, wow, these are more of these little figures we can input. Vididiana, that's so cool. She's actually from the first game. Recovers health after an execution. She's like Yerma. I didn't want Yerma to assist, though, because I felt like that would somehow alter the quest line. So maybe she does have a quest. I just would like for her to not be used so that she doesn't die. It could be more like Dark Souls 2, where you just have to keep them alive and, and you do need to recruit them. I don't know, though. Increase the window of time to perform a block. Read, oh, I love that. 
Reduces penalties for accumulation of guilt. Increase the fervor generated in attacking enemies. Increase the damage of prayers. Increases resistance to lightning damage. Mystical damage. Martyrdom points earned. Oh, a cord knot. Nah, that's wonderful. Another cord. A wax seed. Huh. Mark of martyrdom. Lovely. Well, we're going to buy all that stuff. That's for sure. We're gonna buy all this stuff, bro. Okay, cool. So nothing here is of interest to you. Such a pity. Actually, I want it all, but I'm gonna save up some money first. So there's the uh, the merchant. There you go. See, look at this. I love the way they do that. That's an excellent design choice. Oh, blessed are we, for I behold a penitent. Humbly allow us to present ourselves to your reverence. We are Medardo and Escolastico, pilgrim merchants and scribes by trade. You never know where precious assets may be. What prey can be unjust or malevolent in walking the roads in pursuit of a twofold profit? That of the pocket by selling, and that of the spirit by prayer. While Medardo pays penance in his meditative meanderings, I take care of the business side of things, sparing not a drop of ink to write about the beautiful landscapes of the many varied paths we travel. But go ahead and cast your eyes upon our shop window. Yet another merchant. The objects that were lost on voyages have great appeal and fascination. As they have become a reminder of the feat itself. Cast your eyes upon our shop window. Okay, so they offer different types of things. Prayers, looks like. This is probably a, a verse. And the choir master increased the chance of critical hits. Nice. Okay, I love it. Is there nothing of interest to you? What a pity. Y'all get really hurt when I just am not about to spend money. I'm sorry. Okay, we'll check that out in a minute. One, two, three. Don't have the means to access that just yet. Let's see what's up top. We got 800 more tiers of atonement, and again, that is in the upper level of the uh, the shop area here. There's a lot of sh uh, shopkeeps, and as long as you have the uh, Veredicto hammer, you can access that. And here's the thing, we can't actually go this other path. Oh, there's no way to jump high enough to get over there, so that's fine. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the hub world is expanding, certainly. And there's our pre-deer. We're in the grills and ruin, and that is an excellent stopping point. I hope you guys enjoyed part one of my gameplay walkthrough, which of course is my very first playthrough that I am kind of showing you and experiencing with you so that we can find all the secrets together, develop strategies, and get every single thing, and of course the true ending of Blasphemous 2. If you guys enjoy videos like this, please be sure to like and subscribe. It helps me out immensely, and it lets me know you want more content just like this. And if you want to support me in a more personal way, I do have a Ko-fi page and a Patreon you guys can check out to unlock perks for yourself, and also chat with me directly if you want. It's just a great way to support me in a more personal way. Also, I did want to mention that I do have one, a 100% walkthrough on the original Blasphemous, and of course, a series of lore videos that I will link in the description down below, so please be sure to check those out. Of course, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. There will be many more parts of this series to come, and until next time, it's the Inhuman One, signing out. I'll catch you guys next time.